185 mile per hour winds moving north. We were showing you the images anyway of Puerto Rico. Didn't really need uh, that much from the radar to describe that very clearly defined eye. We were seeing wind gusts of 140 miles per hour land-based observed radar. So that was pretty significant. And uh, again, it's going to continue on that west to northwest of the track. Yeah, and we can take a closer look in at the storm and you can see that well-defined eye wall just north of Puerto Rico right now. And of course, we want to show you the track because that's what everyone has been waiting for each update to see any differences we may see. But really what's been consistent over the past you know, few days has been this northwesterly track, uh, probably just north of Hispaniola, just north of Cuba. And then when does it turn to the north? We'll show you. And you can see that what is expected to be this weekend. Just how soon, though, a little bit can make a big difference in the forecast track. Yeah, the model trend was shifting east today, and that's mm -hmm. why you've seen this forecast track shift east today. And we're showing the cone of air, which I want to point out and talk about because um, I saw recently the National Hurricane Center said that between four days, you have about 175 mile and 225 mile air history. That's the average uh, error in the forecast track that far out. So I hope you hear what I said about that because that's significant. And yeah. so when we see these forecast, tra forecast tracks, know that they will change. And that was the trend today from the, both the European and the GFS and other computer models was to shift farther to the east. This puts us on a, a windy side of the storm for sure. Uh, it would take away, if it didn't go to the west, uh, the saltwater aspects or the flooding aspects, but it still would be significant, especially for inland areas. And, of course, the size of the storm is different than Matthew was last year. Yeah, it does. It is larger. It has a larger wind field. The hurricane force winds extend 50 miles from the center of the storm right now. So it definitely is massive. So it's important to remember we are still in the cone. While we do like the trend of the storm shifting east for us here in the Tampa Bay area, uh, we have to be prepared for it to shift again because right. it obviously... Absolutely could. And people were saying, where do you get gas? Uh, somebody recommended gasbuddy.com. That's a pretty good place to check for that. Um, what's it going to happen? Well, how's it going to happen in Tampa? That's really what people want to know. And that's obviously the most significant thing. Right. Passing to the east here. What would happen in this case scenario if it would pass to our east would be largely wind. Winds go counterclockwise around the center of low pressure. The east coast would be battered with high winds. And, uh, and certainly we'd see some very strong winds and probably quite a bit of rain, especially inland. Tropical storm force wind gusts, that'd be 74 miles, up to 74 mile per hour wind gusts especially. But we have to see, it's still four days away. It's going to evolve over time and just know that this will change. And you know, as far as the timing on this, we're really not expecting um, to really feel the effects until Sunday. Saturday, we may be already seeing breezy conditions here, but Sunday into Monday would be the time frame for us. Um, and of course, you know, that will depend on the exact track as well, but we don't really expect to see any significant impacts until Sunday. With this Should you evacuate Tampa? There's no order to do that uh, right now and just need to stay tuned on that. If you live in an evacuation zone, obviously that's a concern. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you live in an evacuation zone and you're told to evacuate, then you evacuate. Ideally, you evacuate earlier, but, you know, in a, in a perfect world, you don't have to go anywhere. Sometimes you travel just down the road to a friend's house or a relative's house who might be in a safer place. Uh, the idea with protecting your home, uh, should it be necessary, is to keep the wind out of your house. Protect your windows, protect your doors, and then have your hurricane kit inside your home and try to be able to survive in your home. That's the best advice is to try to stay off the roads if you don't have to. Right, because remember, we want to run from the water, which would be a storm surge situation. And hopefully, you know, the draft does stay east and then the storm surge, you know, scenario for us is, you know, not really much of an issue. It's more of a wind and then rain event as we head into Sunday and Monday. Right, it's just kind of comments here. So uh, people are obviously concerned about that. The east coast as well. We're talking about mm -hmm. a potential category four into Miami sometime on Sunday and then moving up the east coast. But uh, we keep saying the forecast track is going to change. I want people to hear that. And that includes the possibility it could wobble back to the west. What are the chances of that? Well, uh, they get lesser as each, each day, day progresses. Uh, the models get a bit more accurate as they get to the exact uh, potential landfall itself. They come into line, so to speak. And we did see them come into line a little bit more today. But we were saying, say, Thursday, Friday, we'd have a pretty clear view as to where the storm could potentially go. So yeah. there's Katia in the mm -hmm. western part of the Gulf of Mexico. That formed today. We also have Jose and Irma out there. Both of these storms, Katia and Jose, are not expected to affect us at this point. Irma clearly is the focus. And, you know, September 10th is peak hurricane season. So this is really the time of year when we can see multiple systems out in the tropics. So right. we'll keep an eye on it. But right now, the focus is definitely Irma for any potential Florida or U.S. impacts. Okay. Um, so questions again. I'm in Texas. Uh, people asking about where it's going to go up the East Coast. 
So anyway, uh, just make sure to stay tuned on all of this. If you want to, are we, is we end of our sequence here? I want to roll back uh, to the right yeah. mm -hmm. to talk about some of the things that we missed here when our audio was off. Sorry about that. Technical problems as always. But uh, the radar was very significant to look at. This is basically now, and I have to go do the 7 p.m. newscast, but you can see uh, passing just north of there. When you have a land-based radar, this is a great way to observe the storm, as I was saying, right. that you can actually see the center of the storm. And look at the last couple of frames of this. You can see it just wobbles a little bit more to the northwest. The more northwest it moves, perhaps the greater chance that it might move a little farther east of the Tampa Bay area. We don't wish this on anybody because uh, the east coast of Florida or the Carolinas or Georgia, because we know that any landfall from the storm is going to be significant. Right. And we saw that from that image coming out of St. Martin. Just incredible, the nighttime video and the sound from that. It just sounds like a jet engine roaring all night long. It's a significant and incredibly scary. Um, if you've been through this, you, you never forget it. Right. And, and also when we show you the Doppler, if you're wondering what the difference between our satellite imagery is, that's kind of a bird's eye view of kind of the whole large system. And this is showing you the detailed rain bands that are, um, you know, feeding into this storm at, at this point. So you can see the, you know, where we're actually seeing that heavy rain pushing into um, San Juan and parts of Puerto Rico right now. Right. So just stay tuned on the track. A lot of mm -hmm. error in these paths as we talked about. And uh, the forecast track can change over time. I say that because a lot of people don't hear it or they're cynical about it. And uh, it's just the way it is. It's humans doing this. We're feeding as much data as we can. The computer models do as good as we can. But uh, forecast tracks, quite honestly, will never be perfect. And you have to factor that in when you see this. The uncertainty is difficult. The waiting is difficult. All you can do is prepare and stay informed. That's really the best advice we have. And the next uh, forecast track will be out at 11 p.m. this mm -hmm. evening. So you'll have that during the 11 p.m. newscast. Yeah, this is a significant storm. This Category 5 storms don't come around very often, especially one that's been so strong for so yeah. long a period of time. So that's it. I'm going to do the 7 p.m. newscast yes. on News Channel 8. Julia, come up at 8 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Sorry about the audio problems. That's Yes. All. Well, that's uh, there's a lot to set these things up, but we got to figure it out. <laughs> okay. You're supposed to be younger and know all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. all right. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us.